Hey, hi, I'm John Barker, and welcome back to another episode of Here to Record Show and Tell. In today's episode, I want to just take you through what happens once I've recorded a conference. I usually talk about that kind of stuff, um, sort of pre-production, equipment, and uh, what to do while you're at a conference, but today I just thought I would just talk a little bit about what happens afterwards. I've got all this footage. If you check out last week's videos, you'll see sort of the way I store all my footage. Um, and now I've got all that footage, and what do I do with it? So um, I finished the conference recently, um, and then I just thought I'd just take you through sort of the editing process. It was a three-day conference, and we'll just take a look at the third day. Um, first thing I do is uh, Final Cut, open it up, create a library, create a project or an event, and then create some projects in there. Um, in this case, I'm going to edit three talks, and uh, what I want to do is head over to head over to my Finder. And um, in here, you can see all of the uh, footage. So I have some exports file, which is where I'll put my exports in a minute. But in this case, I can just go into footage and you can see in here that there's a few different folders, G25 and XA10, those are the two cameras. Um, those are the SD cards from the cameras. So that's where all that footage stays at. It'll be imported when I need it in a minute, but I might not need it. And then I have my shuttle. That is the HyperDAC shuttle from Blackmagic Design. That's where I do my main recording. I'll record um, see a few test shots just to make sure it all works okay. And now I'll record really, really massive files. Here you can see a 97 gigabyte file. Let's just take a little look at it. It is, um, yeah, 97 gigs. And um, looking down here, I use Apple ProRes 422HQ for these, uh, for these conference videos just to get a really good quality version. Um, this file in particular is um, quite a long one actually. It's an hour and 10 minutes. That's kind of on the longer end of the conference talks that I often do. That's why it's such a big file. But that just means that I've got a good quality version in there in the shuttle folder. And then in the video assist, these are pretty much the same files. A test one, a couple of test ones. And then here is the, the same file as um, the one we just looked at that was 90, what, 97 gigabytes. This one is 22 almost, and it's an Apple ProRes 42 proxy version. So that's where um, I just make like a, a secondary recording that's not quite as good quality as the primary recording, but it's, um, it's there if I really need it, and if all else fails, I can use that. But for this instance, I have my three talks here, and I'll just drag them into Final Cut, I mean, if you've used Final Cut before, I'm not really gonna teach you how to edit in Final Cut. Maybe I will if enough people want to know the, that kind of tips. But for now, this is kind of how I run through conferences after they're over. I'll drag that in there, and, and you notice that there's a little arrow in there instead of the plus. The plus means that it'll be copied to the, the project, but I want the little arrow because I don't wanna copy them. I wanna leave them in place where they are on my hard drive. Then I don't need two copies of that 97 gigabyte file. One copy is more than enough. So I'm just gonna dump that in there. And um, often Final Cut wants to do some stuff with that. So if I check out the background tasks thing here, it's gonna just do some thumbnails and waveforms. And I like to just let that do its thing. Often I'll import or drag in the footage like that and just leave it for a while. Um, I find that it's easier to edit whenever the computer's done all its sort of thinking. So I'll just leave it in there. Maybe grab a coffee and come back after a while. It'll make it easier for me when I'm editing, so why not just wait a little while? So I've waited a while. Everything is um, all completed on the background tasks. And I have my three um, master recordings of the day. They will uh, be brought into each of the projects here. And you can see at a glance, the sort of um, talk as it happens. In this case, it was a keynote, close-ups of the speaker, we have some wide shots. We also have some um, slides in here too, that kind of stuff. Um, and I will just jump in. I'll find where the sort of end point is, where the speaker says their last few things and where the audience starts to clap. And I'll just drag that in. For now, I'm not really gonna show that much, but drag that in, maybe fit out the audio. Go to the other end, see where this talk starts, where the speaker comes on the stage. Let's say it's somewhere around there. Cut that out and then maybe just fade in the audio a little bit too. There we go. So that's a rough way of cutting it. I'll obviously jump in there and take those proper bits, but I have a general idea. Um, the editing for me actually sometimes starts before the conference where I'll set up a opening graphic. So 
So in here, I have the sort of opening graphic for this conference. It's got a nice little opening thing, and then it shows the speaker's picture and their name and the talk title. So I've got that approved before the edit even begins, and I'll just take that and throw it in the start of the project, jump in a little bit tighter, and then um, bring things forward a little, let that open up. I will change some details in there uh, in the generator settings. So this is my talk. The name of the speaker will be John Barker. Where they work, I work at here to, to oh, I can't spell, here to record. I'll just take an image of myself and dump it in there as well. And that way, now when I press play on that, has a nice little opening graphic. It's a bit laggy right now, but there you go. You can see, this is my talk by John Barker. Um, this is my talk that has a longer title. Okay, there we go. That's me. And then I can see my talk and blah, 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 blah. I can put a little end bit on there if I want to as well. Sometimes conferences want you to do that. Um, and that's it. For now, I'm just gonna delete a bunch of this talk just so I can make it a bit easier to export it in a second. So that's my talk. Opens up on this nice little graphic and then has that name and then that disappears and I come up behind it. That's all good to go. I'll just change the little setting here so you can see this a bit better. There we go. So basically that's a quick edit. I've got all my talk ready to go. While I tend to edit everything as it happens, Sometimes things just go wrong or things need re-edited. Um, this is a little pamphlet given out at the conference and then I like to use that um, to make some notes. So you'll see that it has all of the talks or all of the speakers in there and then I've just made a bunch of notes beside them like uh, recorded this one or edit out this thing or you know you made a mistake edit camera one at five minutes into the talks. So I'll do things like that. Um, I'll jump into the import window sometimes and bring in extra little footage. So here is the raw wide shot from that, uh, from that talk. So maybe I'll need to take this little section here and then I'll just import that little section into the, um, let me just go a bit smaller, import that little section into the project because I know that at five minutes in, I made a mistake in editing. I need to fix that. So I've imported that into my project here it is here, clip number one. And I can just dump that in wherever it needs to go. Let's say in there, I made a mistake. I'll just put that in there um, and that'll be the new edit. Let's put it over here somewhere. So now I know that I have a nice clean edit, no mistakes. I've kept these notes so that it's a bit easier for me when I edit. And that's it. The talks are ready to go. I'll do the same for all the other talks, edit them down, make sure they're all ready to go. And then next thing to do is to send off a version. So I would find it easier to send off one file to your customer, maybe the first talk on the conference, just send it off to them, let them watch it and make sure they're happy with it. Make sure they're happy with the audio, with the video, um, make sure they're happy with the opening thing, the closing graphics, whatever you may put in there. You want to send them one. Instead of, in this case, I have about 25 video files from the conference. There's no point in me sending all those off to the, the customer and then they say, oh no, I didn't like any of those. Um, instead, it's better just to send off one and see if they like it, see if you got the graphics right, see if you got the audio right, the video right, um, and then get some feedback from that. And then you can export all the rest and upload and send them off again. So um, I've done that, I've exported one off, probably slightly less uh, quality than, than the, the final exports will be, but something that lets me get it to them fast just so they can have a look. So they've said all is good. Um, they sent back, just go ahead and upload them all. So in the export window, I'll do a master file. Um, and in settings, instead of using video and audio mastering, which I find makes quite a big file, I'll tend to use the Apple devices option and it will give a nice MPEG-4 movie file, which, is, which will work great on YouTube and Vimeo and all those places. Um, they'll have no problem pro processing it, but it'll give you a much smaller um, file size in the end. So I will export um, those files out and then I'll just upload them all. That's all that comes next. You gotta sit and wait for them to up upload. These files tend to be
quite big still at the end. It's not as big as, you know, the 70 or 90, 97 gigabyte file that was the original recording, but it'll still be a pretty big file. So I'll tend to just export overnight, upload overnight, and then just come the next day and see how it went. Everything should be processed and ready to go. Um, then I'll just add titles on YouTube and all that kind of stuff, send it off, make sure they're happy. And uh, that's pretty much how I go from a sort of conference recording to the edit. Um, and then next thing you have to do is once it's all done, archive all the footage somewhere. I'm gonna to get to that in next week's video. You can watch it here if you're watching this in the future, but if you're watching this in the first few days, then you can watch it next week. So be sure to subscribe and uh, thank you for watching. Let me know if any of this was helpful for you and I'll see you next time in the next video. See ya, bye bye.